Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon and another tips and tricks video to help you get through the Cloudspire solo scenarios. Today we are taking a look at the second solo scenario for Horizon's Wrath and that is Stormalong. So this features the uh, Horizon's Wrath pirates against the Baronin faction and they have these uh, two I forgot to put the things back on top. These two drilling outposts over here, side by side, way off to the side, pretty far away from their, their fortress gate, actually. But our objective is to get these, uh, drag them via lifeboat back to the Horizon's Wrath. That's one objective. The other objective is to defeat Cram the Mighty, who starts just up here, um, but defeat him using a pull the plank maneuver. And the last one is to actually utilize or deploy all three swappies on wave one. So that one's pretty easy. I, I don't like that as an objective because technically I could do that and then completely get blown out of the water and still get one renown moving forward. So I'm not really sure why they made that one uh, an objective, but it certainly is a side objective. So let's talk about what needs to happen here. First of all, in order to the best way to get Cram the Mighty to fall in between the island and, and your Horizon's Wrath, basically get on the plank, is to lure him all the way over here during wave one and then have him two spots away from your plank. So on any one of these three hexes right here. That's your target for Cram the Mighty. That way, because you go first in this scenario as Horizon's Wrath, when he starts, uh, the beginning in the next scenario, he's actually going to move on to the plank because there's no heroes. So his mark becomes your fortress gate and he will move on to the plank. He will do some damage and get some retaliate damage back. But then when your turn starts, the other minions will just be way up there. When your turn starts, you can pull the plank via either, uh, you know, if you've upgraded your Horizon's Wrath with pull the plank or via strategic maneuver, which I think you want to do because it's going to give you um, some you know, additional stuff in the next scenario. So, and strategic maneuver also doesn't cost you anything except for all the swords you have. So as long as you, during the build phase of wave two, use up all your swords, then you're not losing anything. You don't have to have um, upgraded your fortress. So let's talk about how we can a, get rid of this siege tower and then draw Cram the Mighty over to here. So this is what I have figured out to be the best setup. Now your siege tower here has uh, a fortification on the bottom, two attack chips, and then three range chips, which the three range chips on top are really kind of pointless. It also has a raise, which means it can attack the fortress gate or other spires if they were in the area. So the first thing we don't want to do is run Mist Bane out there because then Mist Bane will become the target. It's a hero that the Siege Tower can defeat in one shot because it's rolling two dice. Mist Bane only has three health, and you could easily roll a two and a one. It's a common roll when you're rolling two attack dice. So you could get one shotted, or Mist Bane could get one shotted, and then you're done. That's that's this is a lose condition losing him. So you want to make sure Miss Bane gets stuck in the Horizon's Wrath, so we're going to put him on the bottom. Then you can see I've got uh, all of my Swabbies ready to go here. I have one of them, however, sitting on top of my Powder Monkey, who I'm going to go ahead and flip her over because she's going to get promoted very soon. All right, so what I'm actually going to do is have the Powder Monkey with the Swabby on top, grouped on top, go first, followed by my Glider. That equals up to five CP. Um, and I want the powder monkey to go first. And then I want the two swabbies to kind of clog everything up here. Okay, so that's what my kind of opening, this is what, you know, traditionally your opening move should look like. You're gonna wanna move your swabby out to your glider will be able to then come out one and go this way to three. It has advanced, it's gone its full movement. 
you could take it up around here, but then it is in range of this Lance Launcher, which again has two attack chips on it, and more than likely will take out your glider before it can even do anything. So take your glider around the southern edge of the Siege Tower here. Then your um, next Swabby is going to come out, and he'll end up right here. And this Swabby is going to come out and clog up the plank, leaving Miss Bane stuck in the fortress until the next turn. So at this point, the Siege Tower's focus is a, there's no hero, so it's a minion it can defeat. And these Swabbies are all equally a decent target, so you get to choose. So you can have it attack the Swabby that's on top of your Powder Monkey. Now technically, this tower could miss. It could happen. It could kind of screw things up, but more than likely it's going to get at least one shot off on the Powder, on the Swabby. Uh, you can spend your two that you got from the very beginning of the prep phase to save him. So save your Swabby, save at least one. And then your Powder Monkey is coming out on its promoted side. So then your Powder Monkey can take away the fortification chip. Boom. Then your Glider can take away one attack chip. Boom. And so now the Siege Tower is left with just one attack chip and a whole bunch of range chips. <clears throat> so let's look at now the very next turn which is going to be the Brana turn one thing you need to make sure you do is you want to have the dispatch go out first one two all right and then you want to have the battleborn come out one two it will end up going you know one two three technically technically you could park it all the way down here if you wanted to but if you have it come out here, one, two, three, it's gone its full movement. It's further along than it started, so it meets all the criteria. This puts Cram stuck in this corner because he can't go around this way because he can't just jump. Um, and he can't fly, so Cram just ends up moving here, and he's done. And it is your option to move Cram after the minions. So at this point now, we're going to have this slow march because of these two water pieces here. Cram's going to get funneled in here, and we're going to have a big... <clears throat> you're going to end up with a big choke point right here, right around this Lance Launcher. And hopefully that's about where your Powder Monkey detonates. Um, but also, when these guys move and then can attack, your Siege Tower can attack. So it's going to attack your Fortress Gate by rolling one die. Again, it's probably going to be a one. It could miss, but the Fortress Gate does retaliate so that's going to remove its bottom chip and now the siege tower is literally just sitting there uh, waiting to be taken out so what you can do at this point then is continue to circle um, people around the southern edge as long as they end up further along than they started so the glider can go one two three here um, let's count one, two, three, just to get to this space. And if my powder monkey, one, two, three, ends up here, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so I believe it was that my powder monkey came up here. My swabby can, one can go this way, one can go this way. Basically, we want to make sure Mist Bane comes out. So, the Lance Launcher will target the uh, either the Glider or the Powder Monkey. You can decide. Uh, hopefully something survives here, but if you're going to lose something, have it take out the Glider. Um, but basically, between the Powder Monkey and Miss Bane, you guys should be able to, uh, within this round and the next round, take out the Siege Tower. So essentially what you're looking like is that these guys all end up here. And eventually, as these guys move along here, the Powder Monkey is protected for at least two rounds by these two Swabbies. Oh, I'm carrying the plank along with me. By these two Swabbies, because they are the target that can definitely be defeated most easily. So these guys get taken out. Uh, hopefully you've defeated the Siege Tower so you can pay to recover them, at least one of them. And then Mist Bane, his responsibility after this Siege Tower is gone or maybe even just leaving one behind, is to come over here and address these two landmarks right here. Because you want this space cleared. 
for a very specific purpose. Now, ideally, you're gonna flip over something like Awaken and Fountain. These don't need to be attacked, but we all know it could be something like uh, Tracks or Helion and Rogue Grizzled Oak. So any of these are possibilities. Ideally, you'd get these two. You might be screwed if you get these two because what you ideally want is these two spots to be cleared at the end of the first wave. And you want Mist Bane to be able to have come back here and he's just gonna sit on the plank and wait. And hopefully the Powder Monkey and your Swabbies and everything else, all these guys are, are have been marched down, taken out. If you need to, you know, you can build your own tower. If you've moved, removed the Siege Tower, you could do a limited build option and put your own tower here. That'll take care of these two. So ideally what you wanna have at the end of wave one this one is almost certainly going to be gone, is Cram will be somewhere around here and end up going like 1-2, or if there's a tower here, he'll go 1-2, but you want him right about there. As long as Miss Bane is still sitting out, he's going to continue to um, march. Yes. Um, and at the last second, you duck Mist Bane in, and Cram goes into campfire mode. Right? Yeah. Because there are now no more opposing units. Okay. So ideally, then at this point, you set up for um, wave two, however you'd like, really. And what we're hoping to do here, as I stated before, is that Cram the Mighty. Sorry, that was loud. Cram the Mighty is going to, on his very opening move, move on to the plank. Then you will pull a strategic maneuver, pulling the plank, defeating Cram the Mighty instantly. So he's no longer available for the rest of the scenario. And ideally, you also have saved two source and you purchase any one of the hex tiles that has at least one path. So it could be that one. It could be that one. Uh, it could be this one that has two. Any single one of these will work. Now remember, several things need to happen here to make this work before wave two. We had to get rid of these two landmarks. We had to have a, a tile that we could purchase. But then what you want to do is slap it just like that. Or slap it just like that. Either way, you want to be able to connect this path to this spot right here. That's the ideal scenario. Because if you can do that during the wave two build phase, you can detach the Horizon's Wrath and park it right here. So again, that is the ideal scenario. It may not happen. You can also park it right here. But the point is, is to get you closer than you were before to these two spots here means your lifeboat has to travel less distance, um, less movement turns to get it to be touching your plank and you win the scenario. So again, you don't even have to get near the Braun and Fortress Gate to be successful in this scenario. So basically I pick people that are in a slow play and this became a major choke point the whole time and I'm basically just trying to cut them down. I'm building up towers here and here. That way they don't get in the way, you know, don't build anything here because it's gonna get in the way of this thing moving across. Um, and certainly don't build anything right here. Um, whether you are able to move the Horizons Wrath here, if you end up having to park it here, don't build something right here because then it's in the way of your lifeboats going by and all of a sudden you've instantly failed that objective. So keep that in mind too. The only thing you want to put here is this, and then you could build something here if your Horizons Wrath has made it to this point. And that's pretty much it. Again, the first objective was to deploy all three Swabbies. That was simple. We um, kept Miss Bane out there to draw and cram the Mighty until he was at least two spaces away, and then we jumped on the Horizons Wrath. That means that Cram the Mighty goes onto the plank space at the beginning of wave two and then we do a strategic maneuver, either going here or here. And then essentially at that point, you bring out Trax Tail 
and Miss Bain, possibly even maybe, you know, a Merc. And they come over here, take out the uh, drilling outposts, the other landmarks that sit over here. I believe those would be two swamp landmarks there. And then you start moving everything over. Um, so yeah, that is basically how you are successful in this second solo scenario for Horizon's Wrath. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you have a different strategy, I'd love to hear that too in the comment section below. If you were able to be successful in this scenario, going about it in an entirely different way, um, I'd love to hear it. Maybe uh, I'd be interested to hear if people can get Cram the Mighty onto the plank in a wave other than at the beginning of wave two, because that seems to be the easiest way to get them there, but it may not be the only way. So uh, again, if this video was helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.